We got a fun one today. This was so much fun to build because it was challenging. I love when there's tons of joinery. It's been a long time since I made something that was real joinery heavy. And what's beautiful about this project, because of the glass top, it showcases all your work. So it's a real opportunity for you to really kind of show off your skills as a woodworker. You don't have to like look under stuff and lift stuff up to show people are checking out your stuff. First time working with glass, I loved it. Glass was cheap. Quarter inch tempered glass for both tables, I got 150, 160 bucks. The UV glue, I thought that was a gimmick, but the glass guy recommended it to me. It just, it's super strong. There's free plans over on my website that's linked down below along with all the materials in the pinned comment and description. We also used the bejesus out of that sled I made a couple weeks ago. So if you haven't seen that video, you should check it out after this one because it's super useful sled. Guys, let's get into the build. Okay, we're gonna start breaking down some lumber. What's great about a project like this is it's a small amount of lumber, but because of all the exposed joinery and angles, I'm certainly gonna cut some extra pieces because I don't know about you, but I'm not perfect and I'm probably gonna screw up at some point. So we're gonna cut some extra. I, My technique for this is day one, leave them a little bit thick. That way, if you get any bow warp from breaking up a big board like this, the next day you can fix it. So let's break down some more. While our lumber's resting overnight so we can mill it down to its final size, we're going to make a quick and dirty bridal joint jig. Now, if you haven't seen my video on bridal joints, it's awesome, you should check it out right here. This is gonna be a little bit different because it's it's more of a tenoning jig with different angles. We're gonna have to do different bridal joint angles for both of the tables as well as front and back. You'll see, we'll talk about it. I don't wanna get too much into it right now. So we're gonna make a little piece that rides our fence out of some three quarter inch Baltic birch along with a nice flat reference face. The important trick when you're putting together, you'll see how I do it, is that your big wide face that you're gonna reference your bevel gauge in a later step off of, it rides flat on your table saw table. And that's because we're gonna reference off that. So when if you assemble it and it's riding on that table, you know that's gonna be a good reference edge for you later down the road. Let's put this together quick and dirty, and then uh, I'll see you tomorrow. We'll mill up some lumber. What is so cool about this project is there's a ton of exposed joinery, it's through joinery, so it's really fun and you can do lots of things with it. You can leave stuff proud, you can round them over, you could put pins in them. There's a million ways you could customize this to make it your own. Uh, what's cool about that as far as setup goes, because this is a little bit difficult with the angles. Actually, you know what, why don't you come in here, let me show you. All right, so like I was saying, we have these pieces with all through joinery. And I left these long in the plans. I'm probably gonna flush that up with a flush trim bit, but the, the great part is this piece can be way longer than it is in the plans when you cut this equilateral joinery because you could measure from the middle of the piece. I'm gonna leave them extra long because you can always trim off some, but you can never add to it, obviously. Uh, there's no such thing as a board stretcher. So I'm gonna cut all my pieces down to the same length. I put some minimums here that I wanna cut to before I get to final length. I'm gonna leave the ends square 
And the reason being is that then I can measure off where my half laps are gonna go. There's one on the top of the stretcher and one on the bottom of the stretcher. And then I'll just measure out from like a center point or something. And because I've cut all my boards to length, even though they're long, I'll be able to set a stop block and get the exact same place for each board without having to measure each time. The angle on the legs here, you can see that's gonna be different for this is the coffee table. It's much shorter. Therefore, the angle is a little bit wider. I think these are 16 degrees. On the small table, this is, I believe, 11 degrees. So we're gonna do our joinery for the legs later because both of these have the same 60 degree angles in the top. We're gonna be able to use this sled we made a couple weeks ago. This thing, we're gonna be able to use the absolute bejesus out of this. And then after we get all our 60 degree half laps cut, we're gonna use this bad boy we made yesterday to cut our bridle joints. And the great part is we'll be able to adjust the angle really easily with just you know a finished nail gun or something to be able to cut those bridle joints. But again, you can also leave the legs super long because it's through joinery. You can leave them square and then we're going to trim at the very end. We'll trim the, the legs and the top of the bridle joint to either 11 or 16 degrees. So, sorry, that may be a lot of information. I, I'm going to have the, the free plans will be linked down below. I will also include templates for all the angles. So I'll just draw the angle in a triangle. You can print it out full size, and then you can use that to set your bevel gauge if you don't have something like this. These are great tools. I'll link these below too. This is one of the blem sets I got from Tay Tools for like, I don't know, 50% off of what they cost normally. Look, it's a old Mitutoyo one and it was a blem. So they just tried to scratch off the logo and they sell it for like way, way cheaper than it is normally. And it's just cause they're scratched. It's not because they're inaccurate, but I digress. God, I love to get on tangents. Let's cut some joinery. All right, now it's joinery time for the stretchers. Now this was kind of complicated to figure out uh, and draw in Fusion, but I've come up with a way that this is so easy if you have a way to cut 60 degrees and a stop block. Now, if you don't have a sled like this one that can do a 60 degree angle, you could do this with your miter gauge and some sort of stop block on your table saw. I like these mag switch ones, they kind of lock down and you don't have to move them. Uh, but you can do this with literally one measurement. So this is why we left our boards long. Now remember, we're gonna be cutting a taper here for the bridle joint. And then here, you don't have to leave this as a half lap joint. You can cut this flush with the end of your board. I left it long because I might wanna do like a cool little rounded sticking out part, uh, but I wanna see what it looks like when it's together. So here's the way you can do this with one measurement. So easy. You measure to the center of your board. now. The plans will be much better, and I'm gonna include just an equilateral triangle in the plans, so you can print it out full size and set your bevel gauge off of it if you need to. Otherwise, there's a couple ways to measure 60 degrees, and I will show you that here in a second. But what we're gonna do first, is we know from the plans that the inside of our triangle is 11.31. That can literally be whatever you want. I did 11.25 to make it easy for the math. I measured to the center of my board. I marked that out with a square. And then half of 11.25 is five and five eighths. So I measured that from the line here. And then all you had to do is mark this one line. And I'm gonna show you with this spacer how we do it. So what you then do is you need to set your fence to 60 degrees. Now I used this Mitutoyo or Blem one I got from Tay Tools. I think I already mentioned it. It'll be down in the pinned comment, but I set this to 60 degrees by just setting it on my table saw and using this digital angle finder. I never trust these tiny, tiny little hash marks. Like, I don't know if that's right or even if my vision's good enough to do that. And then once you have 60 degrees, you can set it your fence, or if you're using a miter gauge, you could do your miter gauge and you lock that in. Now, this is why we're doing all the stretchers first because 60 degrees is gonna be for the small table and big table. Next, I took exactly half 
the height of my pieces because it's gonna be half lap joints. And I set my table saw blade to cut exactly half. It's important that you use a table saw blade with a flat tooth. So even though this is mostly a cross cut, I'm actually using my ripping blade because it's the only one I have with a flat tooth. Once we get that all set up, we can take our line that we just drew and put it up on our fence and line it up with our blade. So I just take the outside of my tooth and line it up. And then we have this spacer here. This measurement, 1.155, it's about one in five thirty seconds, is the leg of an equilateral 60 degree triangle if your piece is one inch wide, which is what I'm doing my pieces to, minus the thickness of your blade. So I came up with 1.03. So then I just, now that I have my piece lined up with my blade, I hold it there, you can lock it down with a hold down, and then you just take your spacer and slide it in between your piece and your stop block. What's great about this, you can take your spacer out and you cut, this is gonna be the inside of your half lap. You cut that and then you slide it all the way over to your stop block. You cut the outside of your half lap and that's gonna define the ultimate edges and then it's really easy to just clear out the middle. You can make a couple cuts, do it with a chisel or you, if you got a good flat bottom blade, you can just do the whole thing on the table saw. Now, the reason you don't have to move it because it's an equilateral triangle, everything is equal. All we have to do is take the piece, flip it end over end. I guess that would be around the horizon 180 degrees and don't flip it like this. And then you can do the same thing. You just take your spacer, put it in between you and your stop block, make your inside cut, remove the spacer, make your outside cut, and put them all together. Now, one of the areas where you could get tripped up is if you're not quite at 60 degrees. So I am actually cutting this joinery sort of loose. The glue will fill it up, but you can adjust by either adding a couple pieces of paper or you can shave down your spacer. Make sure you do some test pieces. I did some test pieces. It's, it's like, a fraction wider than I'd like it to be, but with glue, I think it'll be just perfect. The reason why you wanna just do them as half laps for now, this is going to get an angle that follows this, uh, and you can either trim that flush with your other piece, or the way I have them drawn, it's hanging over an eighth, and that way if I kinda wanna round it and make it look cool, I can. So I'm gonna leave this for now until after I do like a dry assembly and sort of figure out whether I wanna flush it up so that everything looks you know, really smooth or if I wanna leave it a little bit proud so I can add a little bit of flair to the joinery there. So once we get all of these cut, then and only then will we trim our taper for our legs and then we'll cut our bridle joints for our joinery. We're gonna cut these for both the big and small table. I've got a spacer, the spacer for the small table minus my eighth inch blade is 0.7. Four, one. And again, that measurement, we'll show you the large blade, the 1.155 is that leg of a 60 degree triangle across a one inch piece of wood. So let's cut our joinery for both tables and we'll put a dry fit together and then we'll cut the joinery for our legs. All right, quick little update. This is my first time making this table, so I've realized something. This is the perfect way to cut this joinery. Don't change anything about what I said. It's brilliant, it, well, brilliant. I hate to toot my own horn, you ego maniac. But when you're done, before you change your blade height or your setup for the next table, uh, you're gonna have to open up the outside of your half laps that don't attach to the leg. So it turns out I'll probably end up cutting that off pretty close, if not flush, but you create yourself this little puzzle. <laughs> it's like one of those puzzles you buy at like an airport thrift store where it's tough to get together. So I'm gonna just open up the outsides. Just make sure you be real careful that you pick the right ones that you're cutting, but you're gonna wanna open them up a little bit so you can dry fit it. You only have to take an extra pass or so wider, but I recommend doing it before you change your blade height for the next table. That way it's nice and even with what you already cut.
All right, so these fit together great. They look killer. I'm definitely gonna have to chop off the ends here. We might be able to do a little bit proud thingy, but I don't know that it's worth it. One thing I realized, I, in my plans, I have plenty of room, and this is a great example of like when you design something from scratch and it's your first time doing it, you find all these little things that can go wrong or be small problems. Now, I thought I gave myself plenty of room here, but when you look at these legs, when they get angled, this will be at an 11 degree angle. The big table is gonna be at a 16. They interfere with this half lap here. So this is a great example of, you know, good furniture makers, it's not that they don't make mistakes, it's just they know how to fix them. So what I'll do, you, you can do a couple things. You could skinny up this leg. We're gonna end up tapering it before we glue everything up anyways. So you could skinny up the whole thing or you could just very easily make this bridle joint narrower than the board and then you can chop off a little bit of this tenon on this one and it's gonna fit together just fine. It'll totally, nobody will know because the only part that's gonna stick over the half lap will be this underside and you'll never see it. So. Now it is time to set your angle on a bevel gauge for your legs. And it doesn't matter if the angle is right. You know, I'm gonna do 16 on the big, 11 on the small because the smaller is taller. So if it was the same angle, it would stick out way too far. The important part is that you do not move these. So what I'm gonna do is I have my two tables here. I have a 16 degree and 11 degree angle, which I set just on my table saw with uh, that digital angle finder. And then I'm gonna have a backup piece. So whichever one I'm working on, I'm gonna set it to the bevel gauge and put it way away from where I am. So that way, if I knock this out of alignment here again, I have something I can go back to. Because we're gonna be using this to make so many different cuts, it's gonna be important that you never lose this angle until the project's complete. So let's head over to the table saw and start cutting some joinery. All right, so now it's time to cut our joinery, these bridle joints, it's kind of fun. And we're gonna be using the jig we made yesterday as well as this sled again. So. You're gonna have your bevel gauge. It's gonna be, like I said, set to the angle and you're not gonna change it. And you're going to set the fence on your miter gauge or your sled to the correct angle. And you're gonna to need to do some trimming. So what we're gonna trim here is both sides of the leg. We're gonna cut the angle on both sides. These are parallel to each other. Don't forget that on the legs. And then on the stretchers, we're just gonna do one side. Cause remember, we're gonna trim this edge flush. Once we do our glue up, we'll be able to trim this up and, and sand it flush. So we're just gonna do the side where the leg is gonna attach. And then we're gonna do one more cut. We're gonna do these pieces for our tenoning jig. So you're gonna cut a piece, a couple pieces of scrap at that same angle. And that's so that they can ride on the table of your table saw. Then you're going to attach them. A couple things I've learned, I already did the smaller table because I wanted to do one before I told you exactly how I did it, is put these as close to the ends as possible. It just makes it a little bit easier to clamp your workpiece. The other thing is if you want to cut four of these, you can, and then change them out. Once you've done the inside piece on your stretcher and then you go to do your legs, you can change these out, it'll give you a little bit better zero clearance. To be honest, if you just go really slow when you're using your dado stack, you're gonna cut these with a dado, you're gonna be just fine. The thing that you want to do, the reason there's two of these, especially when you're cutting your middle one, you can't just run it once, because if it's not dead, dead center, then you're gonna end up with a lopsided looking joint. So what you wanna do is cut it, flip it around and cut it the other way. You may get very, very little material, but it'll ensure that your piece is dead center. And then when you do the, the tenons, the leg piece, that's real easy because you just set it on one side and when you flip it to the other, it's gonna be in the exact same place and it'll be centered. The thing that you wanna do as far as sizing these, what I always do is I like to do the exterior pieces of my bridle joint first because I feel like it's always easier to fit the centerpiece. So that way you can cut this and then you don't have to worry about it and then you slowly bump your fence over until your joint fits the way you want to. I like to have them, you know, not super tight, you know, just like a freaking hair's width of wiggle room just because once you get glue in there, everything's gonna swell up. When you're doing a glue up, that can be kind of stressful. So like I said, we cut the little one. We're gonna do our table. The way that these fit and what I was talking about earlier, see, we, we have all this extra room. So what we're gonna do is measure where we need to cut to. And then we're just gonna simply cut off this portion of this tenon. And then it should fit fine. It'll fit, you know, underneath 
this half lap and it's gonna look great. And that was just my mistake on the math. I'll, I'll fix those on the plans. I'm gonna go ahead and do the bigger table. We're gonna clean up these tenons. And then last thing we're gonna do before glow up is we're gonna taper these legs. And that's why we cut the end of this now. So that way you don't have to worry about it later and your sled may have moved. So we'll cut a taper and then we're gonna put these things together and uh, get them all finished up. All right, so we are ready for glue up, which is exciting. The glass came in, I just picked that up and everything's looking good and fitting together. Now, anytime that you are gluing something up that is not square, it becomes a challenge. And so, I, by the way, I stuck a chisel in my finger cleaning these up like right after we stopped filming, I bummed it wasn't on camera. But if you haven't seen the video where I talk about what to do in case of an injury, I interviewed three people who work in the trauma department. There's a video right here, you should definitely watch it. Uh, one of the great things about just now, I, I probably could use a stitch or two, but it was easy. I knew exactly what to do. We were able to quickly get the blood stopped and you know, it, I felt very informed. So if you haven't seen this video, highly recommend you check it out. But I digress, let's go to glue up one of the benefits to, I haven't flush trimmed this part of the half lap yet, which I'm going to, but also from cutting off all those little angles, we ended up with all these little wedges. So I'm not even gonna need to use clamps on these parts. We're gonna use wedges, just pound them in there, ladies, gents, and get them nice and firm. Come on guys, and get this glued up. We'll let it sit for about 20 minutes just to get you know a little bit firm. Guys, stop. And then we're gonna put the legs together and get those. And then when we're done, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna attach the glass tops, which I think will be really interesting, something new to me, uh, and I'm excited to try it. So let's get into the glue. All right, glue up's done. <laughs> I think I got distracted by my finger yesterday and I forgot to taper the legs before uh, glue up. So I could have very easily done it on that sled. It would have taken three minutes. So instead I had to make some templates. These will be in the plans as well. So you can print them full size if that's what you want to do, or at least just use them to draw the line. We're going to flush off the half laps. <laughs> that's a tough one to say. We're going to flush off the half laps. Sorry, I'm a little bit slow. And then we're gonna do something I've never done before, but I did a little test here. We're gonna use these aluminum standoffs to glue the glass. Here was an extra piece from the infinity cube table. And man, this stuff sticks amazing. It's like seven bucks on Amazon or something. And there's a little UV light and it just stays wet until you flash it with this. And then it like is rock hard. I tried to knock off that metal stanchion or standoff with a hammer and it took like a really good whack to knock it off. <laughs> so let's get into finishing this up. We're gonna clean everything up. I think I decided I'm not gonna leave the bridle joints proud. I just, because I had to chop them up, they got kind of small and uh, I don't, I just don't think there's enough meat to make it look cool. So I'm gonna flush those up too. Give it a sand, a round over attach the, the glass and see what it looks like. So let's get to it.
Guys, this came out amazing. I am so happy with it. It looks so good. And like, if you look from the side, it has a kind of an optical illusion, like it's leaning whichever way you're looking. And then from the top, it looks really cool. And you know, like I said, the great thing about a three-legged table is it can never wobble. So you don't even have to worry about it. What would I have done differently? I definitely would have left those pieces longer, the stretchers, because you know, then I wouldn't have had to do all those extra steps on the joinery. I certainly wouldn't have stuck a finger or stuck a chisel in my finger and <laughs> I would have tapered the legs before glue up. You know, I cut myself and then we bandaged it up and I sort of just spaced it and it really sucked because that ate about two and a half hours of my day today. Other than that, it just came out gorgeous. I loved using that sled. If you haven't made one of those yet, I highly recommend there's free plans in that video. Uh, remember it's up in the top right hand corner here. It was just so useful. So if you want to build this, there's free plans over on my website. Uh, it's more of a cut list and it's got templates and angles and stuff, and you can use it in conjunction with this video. Guys, if you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, get a dovetail jig, a stop block, or an apron. Stay safe in the shop, guys. Thanks for watching.